Welcome to the first in a series of Inalab's online seminars. This seminar focuses on quartz pendulous accelerometers for navigation and tactical grade systems. High-end inertial sensors are primarily produced by defense and aerospace industries for internal use. This creates a shortage in the open market. ITAR control is an aggravating factor. So in that context, how can commercial and industrial sectors obtain these parts to fuel their growth? Let's explore the benefits of Inalab's accelerometers and if these products can provide a solution to the problem. First, we look at who is Inalab's. Inalab's mission is to produce, develop and deliver high-precision inertial sensors. The company is established in Ireland and employs 54 people, most of them talented engineers who drive innovation and best-in-class industry practice. We are ISO 9001 certified. Our commitment to innovation can be seen in part through our presentations at the respected ISS Gyro Technology Symposium in Karlsruhe. In 2013, we presented our innovative CVG Gyro design. In 2014, we presented our, on the use of our CVG Gyro for light North Finder applications. And in 2015, we presented our paper on quartz pendulous accelerometers for navigation and tactical grade systems, on which today's seminar is based. There are many different types of accelerometers. Pendulous integrated gyro, floated, dry pendulous, vibrating beam, and silicon MEMS accelerometers. Although MEMS overlaps the last two categories, we have taken them as a separate category for this seminar. Dry pendulous accelerometers were conceived in the late 1970s between North American Aviation, Singer, and Sunstrand Data Control, as new emerging applications were looking for smaller, cheaper, and more reliable inertial sensors. This was also the driving force for the development of vibrating beam accelerometers and later for silicon MEMS. However, as vibrating beam appeared to be sensitive to vibrations and MEMS a good fit for low-grade tactical applications, dry pendulous accelerometers became the most widely used for navigation and tactical grade applications. Following in the footsteps of the pioneers, Inalabs recently introduced three variants of dry pendulous accelerometers, the AIQ 2010, the AIQ-1410 and the AIQ-710. These accelerometers have been built in Dublin, Ireland, are ITAR free and cover three performance grades, navigation, tactical and industrial. The navigation and tactical variants AIQ-2010 and AIQ-1410 come with a dynamic range of 60G. The industrial variant AIQ-710 is a 30G accelerometer. We will now look at the principle of operation, the design and technology principles, followed by the results achieved to give a complete picture of the new accelerometer family. In order to understand the principle of operation, let's look at the conceptual drawing in the top left-hand corner of the screen. The pendulum is in reality a proof mass, connected to a rigid body by means of thin hinges, providing a rotational stiffness. In case of external accelerations, the proof mass should swing unless a torque is applied to maintain it in null position. Therefore, the torque is a reading of acceleration relative to the gravitational field. To turn the concept into an industrial sensor, let's look at a cross-section in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen showing an Inalabs accelerometer. This is a symmetrical structure with just a few parts. Right in the middle there is a pendulum. Two coils are attached on the two sides of the pendulum and the pendulum is clamped between two magnetic structures with a magnet in the centre. There is a servo loop electronics and finally an outer casing. A gap of 20 microns is left between the pendulum and the magnetic structure for capacitive detection. This is a servo loop system. When acceleration is applied along the axis, a signal is derived from the capacitive detection to generate a current provided to the coils. Because of the magnetic field, the plus forces are creating a restoring torque to the pendulum. The current is a measure of the specific forces. One of the critical components is the pendulum. The material used is a high-purity fused quartz. The pendulum is a thick disc structure connected to a rigid outer frame by two thin hinges. A deposited gold film is used to form an electrode pattern onto the surface as required for capacitive detection. Fabrication is based on conventional wet etching techniques and is categorized as a wafer-based process. As the fused quartz consists of quartz in amorphous form, the etching is isotropic and produces a high quality surface finish without the etching defects typically observed for crystalline materials. Dimensional accuracy in deep cavity locations is near 1 micron 
and with an etch rate of 3 microns per minute, pendulums are volume produced at high yield. A design to cost approach has been followed to lower the cost across all variants. The AIQ1410 and AIQ710 are equipped with the same pendulums and the same magnetic circuits. All variants are equipped with the same electronics. The assembly is performed in a class 5 clean room. Production capacity installed is for 850 units per month. We will now review the results of an extensive test plan performed on the three variants. With regard to temperature testing, 200 units of the AIQ2010 have been tested along with 100 units of the AIQ1410 and AIQ710 to support statistical analysis. For transfer function measurement, vibration, shock and life tests, the sample size is smaller, as the results are, by design are very consistent across all variants. The key parameters are measured in accordance with IEEE standard 1293, 1998. For static tests, the model equation can be seen in the top left hand corner of the screen. The parameters are I, current output, K1, scale factor, K0, bias, K2, second order coefficient, delta O, delta P, misalignment errors. The charts here show the measured transfer function. The measurements were taken using the electronic bandwidth method, in which electronic stimulus is injected into the control loop and subsequent response measured. This technique has been compared to the mechanical bandwidth response and yields consistent results. The minus 3 dB point is close to 2.6 kHz and a second order system is a good approximation for the gain response. The minus 90 degree point is approximately 1.7 kHz and the phase response is more accurately modelled using a third order fit. We will now look at the distributions of the data, scale factor and misalignment recorded during temperature testing. Testing is performed using an indexing table with resolution and accuracy of 1 microradion. The accelerometers are mounted on a precision fixture inside a thermal chamber. The ramp between two consecutive set points is 3 degrees Celsius per minute and the temperature stability required on each set point is plus minus 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. The bias, K0, is calculated from a four-position test over temperature. The thermal sensitivity is calculated as the slope of a first-order least squares fit to the results over the full temperature range, minus 55 to plus 95 degrees Celsius. The bias residuals are calculated by subtracting a third-order least squares model from the raw data over the full temperature range. From this, the largest absolute value is taken as bias hysteresis. An example of the bias residuals is shown in the figure in the middle with values much less than 100 micro G. The 50% and 70% data represent the limits within which 50% and 70% of the population fall. For all variants, the bias, the bias thermal sensitivity and the bias hysteresis are comfortably within our specification. This indicates that many of the parts are performing to a higher classification level. The scale factor K1 is also calculated from the four position test over temperature. The thermal parameters are calculated in the same way as the bias parameters. An example of the scale factor residuals is shown in the figure in the middle. For all variants, all parameters are significantly below the specification limit, indicating that many of the parts are performing to a higher accelerometer classification level. The misalignment data distribution functions are given here. Misalignment is also calculated from the four position test over temperature. The thermal parameters are calculated in the same way as bias and scale factor parameters. An example of the misalignment residuals is shown in the figure in the middle. For all variants, the results are again well within specification limits. In order to assess the noise content and short term stability, two tests were performed spectral noise and Allen variance. The Allen variance test was performed by recording one hour data and calculating the standard deviation of different time averages to the data. Most of what is measured comes from the electronics and consequently the results are consistent across all variants. The lowest point achieves 30 nano g root mean squared at 100 seconds. This performance is good enough to measure the moon and sun tidal accelerations. The velocity random walk is extremely low with 14 micro g per square hour. The noise results are very consistent with the results seen for the Allen variance. In the 10 Hz frequency band, much less than 1 micro g root mean squared is achieved. In-labs accelerometers can be categorized as low noise accelerometers 
and for all variants the results are well within specification limits. The long-term repeatability figures are derived from a test for which the measurements are taken under constant conditions and between successive measurements the accelerometers are exposed to temperature variations. For this purpose a real-time aging program was introduced in which a four-position test over temperature is performed every two weeks. In between the accelerometers are stored in normal storage conditions at ambient temperature and regular atmosphere. The chart shows the results to date. 100 days of data have been gathered from three randomly chosen units and testing is ongoing. The worst case results were taken from the recorded data. While the measurements have yet to complete the full one year target time, the data thus far suggests the final values should be significantly within the specification limits for all variants. To finish with the test results during the qualification test program, all variants were subjected to vibration and shock testing in all three axes. Vibration testing consisted of sine sweep and random vibration testing in the frequency range 20 Hz to 2 kHz. The sine sweep profile applied accelerations of up to 35 g, while random vibrations were at 14 g root mean squared. Shocks were applied at 70, 110 and 250 g. Changes to performance were negligible when compared to the performance before testing. Part of the measurement is VRE or Vibration Rectification Error. The VRE distributions are shown here. For all variants, the measure values are significantly within the specification limits. In conclusion, Inlabs has recently released a range of quartz pendulous servo accelerometers with excellent noise performance. Inlabs is now established as a European source of high quality parts for a wide range of markets and applications. The results of an extensive test and qualification campaign have been presented clearly showing potential to deliver performance consistent with higher grades of accelerometer. Inalabs is also pleased to announce the launch of two higher classification variants to this range. Extending our portfolio of ITAR free accelerometers, the AIQ2020 and AIQ2030 offer very high input range and excellent long-term repeatability, making them optimal solutions for system designers to meet the increasing demand for greater accuracy and reliability across a range of applications. Thank you for viewing this seminar. For more information on any of our products, please visit us at www.inalabs.com or email contact.sales at inalabs.com.